As IT professionals, we're often tasked with installing security patches for applications which have been found to have a buffer overflow, a SQL injection, or some other type of vulnerability. The process of creating an application from scratch is challenging. And usually, there's a balance between how quickly it takes to get that application finished and the security of that application itself. Many of these problems with the application code are found in quality assurance. And there's usually a testing process where they'll not only test the functionality of the application, but they'll also run a series of security checks as well. And if those vulnerabilities aren't found during the QA process, then there's probably a researcher or an attacker who will certainly identify those vulnerabilities and in some cases find a way to exploit them. Application developers will often perform input validation when information is going into their application. This ensures that any unexpected data that's put into one of those inputs will not be interpreted by the application. As you can imagine, there are many different ways to input data into an application. There might be a form where you're typing information in. There might be fields on the screen. Or you might be putting in free form text. The application developer is responsible for analyzing all of that input and ensuring that it matches what's expected by the application. For example, if there is a field to input a zip code, it should only be a certain number of characters long. There might be a certain set of numbers. Or in different countries, there might be a different format. That standard input validation needs to occur for every field in the application that's using a zip code. And if anybody inputs something that doesn't follow that format, the application should recognize that and prompt the user to correct the input. There are automated processes for providing different types of input for these applications. We refer to this process as fuzzing. Fuzzers will put random types of data into the input fields to see what the application might do. And if the application performs unexpectedly, the application developer may need to go back and change the way that they're doing their input validation. If you've worked at all with troubleshooting browsers, then you're probably familiar with cookies. Cookies are small bits of information that are stored inside of your browser that help provide tracking information for sites that you visit. It might personalize the information that's shown on a web page. Or it's responsible for maintaining the session once you log into a website. The cookies themselves are just a data file. They're not an executable. They don't contain any type of malware. But the information within the cookie could provide an attacker with valuable details. For that reason, many browsers will use secure cookies, which means there is a special attribute set in the cookie that requires it to only be transferred if you're using HTTPS or an encrypted connection. There's no special security built around cookies. And anything you put into a cookie can easily be read from the browser. For those reasons, application developers don't put sensitive information inside the cookie because that information could potentially be seen by a third party. One way that application developers use to test the security of their applications is to run it through a process of static code analysis. You may see this referred to as Static Application Security Testing, or SAST. The developers will put their code into the static analyzer. And that analyzer will look through the code to try to find vulnerabilities such as buffer overflows, database injections, and other types of vulnerabilities. This process of trying to find vulnerabilities by using a static analyzer isn't perfect. There are certain security concerns that can't be found by simply looking at the code that's in an application. For example, there may be cryptography that's included with an application. But the implementation of the cryptography is ultimately what creates the vulnerability. And that type of security issue is probably not going to be found by a static analyzer. And ultimately, the output from the analyzer may not be perfectly accurate either. A developer may have to go through the output of the analyzer to see if there are any false positives within the feedback. Here's a sample of some output from a static code analyzer. You can see there are a number of issues that need to be addressed within the code of the application. For example, in the first line of the static code analyzer output, you can see that file test.c on line 32 has a problem with the gets function because it doesn't check for a buffer overflow. This analyzer even gives recommendations to use fgets instead of using gets. The developer would then be responsible for going through this entire set of output to see if these recommendations are ones that apply to the code that's listed in the application. By using this static code analyzer output, the application developer can find some of those glaring problems and correct them before the application is distributed. 
Each time you install an application on your system, there is the potential that someone has embedded some malware within the application itself. And by installing the application, you're also infecting your computer. There are ways to check to see if the code that you're installing is the same code that was sent by the manufacturer or the application developer. And the way that we do that is through code signing. Code signing answers a number of questions for us. First, has the application been changed in any way since the time that it left the developer? And secondly, is this application that we're installing really originating from that developer? To answer these questions, the developer simply needs to digitally sign the code itself and send that digitally signed code to the end users to install. This is very similar to any other digital signature process. This uses asymmetric encryption, where a certificate authority is responsible for signing off on that particular developer's key. Once the developer has that signed key, they can then use that to sign any code that they may be distributing. During the installation process, your operating system will analyze that code. It will check the signature. And if something isn't right with the validation of that digital signature, it'll put a prompt on the screen informing you that something has changed with that application. Another useful security technique for applications is the ability to sandbox the application. This means when the application begins executing, it only has access to the data necessary for that application to work. There's also another type of sandbox that is used during the development process itself. Developers will help create their code in a digital sandbox that is separated from anything else in the organization. So while they're working on creating a new app, they're not affecting the production network at all. Once the application arrives on your local computer, it's using sandboxing within the app to perform a similar function. For example, if you're using a virtual machine, that VM is separated from any other VM that might be running on that system. Your mobile devices have sandboxing built into the operating system of your mobile phone so that you can run applications that may be able to use data on your phone, but protect that application from using other personal information that may also be stored on that phone. For example, we may be using a browser on a mobile phone, and that browser will show us all of our stored bookmarks. But the browser, by default, does not have access to your camera roll. So an attacker getting access to your device through a browser has limited scope on where they may be able to access data on that device. Many developers will build monitoring into the applications that they are creating. This allows them to monitor the use of the application and any security concerns that may arise. For example, they can see if anyone's trying to perform any type of SQL injection into the application or someone trying to take advantage of a vulnerability that may have previously existed. This creates extensive logs for this application use, and the developers can use tools to analyze those logs to try to find unknown vulnerabilities or attacks they may not have been thinking about inside of the application. And of course, if something unusual occurs with the application, it'll be reflected in the monitoring services. So if there's an unusual type of file transfer or an increase in the amount of access for a client, you'll be able to see this in the security monitoring.